Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back to our workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hello, I'm Marco, I love to vote. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them is two best to do. Hello, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Taylor Marcel, I'm the other mechanic. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment what you want, just put it in the comment system. We'll so, get back. in for repair today we have our Pro Forge Disruptor Stubble Cultivator. We have a John Deere 3040, we have an update on the 7A20 and we also have the Lemkin sower there with a gearbox problem. So first of all we head over here to Marco and Caelan with the Stubble Cultivator. So we have our Pro Forge Disruptor, now it's used for, we use it as a kind of a min till there just for um, running into stubbles there, creating a bit of tilt there and creating a bit of regrowth on, on some of the, the crop that was in the previous. But the problem that we were having with that one was the legs were getting very loose. Now, it was a machine we bought in the UK from AgriLink. It came originally with no bushings here in, in these holes and all of a sudden then we were getting a lot of play. Now the legs were waddling all over the place, the more we tightened them, it didn't seem to make any difference. The holes just getting, get, started to get to wear a little bit more. So what we've done is, it's a 13 leg machine and we've had to take off every single leg, take this coil springs off them here, cut out the original bracket and Marco is after welding up a new bracket. Now we've made it slightly different and we've manufactured and modified a bit to ourselves that actually that the, the spring now runs at more of an angle, the springs were running flat and we reckoned that there was more pressure on the bolts than there was actually on the spring and therefore there was no give on the leg itself and it was wearing all the holes. So hopefully now this will solve it. So as you can see here now we have our new bolts to go in, the 24 mil bolts. This is the old bracket and it's completely, there was a little paper bushing in it there now that was really of no advantage. I can get it out now, probably you won't come out now when you want it. Anyway, that's it, the new bolts go in here into this new so he has them snug fit right tight and hopefully that should solve the problem. This is the other end of it which was attached to the spring and again you can see an awful lot of wear on that as well. It just meant that the legs were waddling all over the place. So we have Caleb and Marco here on the job. Yeah. Having a bit of luck. He's Marco's expert, so it's his, it's his modification. So if it works, so he, any queries, he, yeah, if you have any queries, ask Marco that. He's patent the idea here. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it does work now when we, when we do say all this. <laughs> It's yeah, a bit of a job now taking this asunder because you have to take these out, take this off, take the spring out and this is the first one now just going to fit back in and then you have to kind of get underneath it here as well to give it a lift because it is quite heavy isn't it Michael? Yeah it's too heavy there. Well I got a deep socket. We're going to have to get in a deep, I think it's a 46 here on the back and we're going to run this up and see exactly what this one is like then and then when we've that one done we've just another 12 more. Make fun the mind up the fossil. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hippie get up. Push up and start walking a little bit of humble, a little bit of There we go, that makes life a lot easier, man. Thanks so much, Dad. It's a party, my posse's been on Broadway, and we did it all way. Grown music, I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yet I'm on, let that stage light go and shine on down. Got that Bob Barker suit game and Plinko in my style. Money, stay on my craft and stick around for those pounds. But I do that to pass the torch and put on for my town. So as you can see, the lads have uh, put all, reassembled the whole machine here. This was the one that was given the problem here. This. Uh, main strut here and we've put in a new uh, new piece here and drilled a new hole in it there so look at hopefully now it's good and solid and the next time you see that she'll be ready for the field so just following on from last week we had our 7a20 in uh, obviously it's still in here at the minute now we did find solved some problems and we did find more problems one of the problems that you had was you had no flashing between the cars were coming on but they weren't flashing yeah 
they were staying on. Yeah. Which indicated then that that would be something to do with the flash unit. Yeah, but the, the problem I had at the time was I didn't know whether it was a flash unit or whether it was through the ECU, ECU yeah. which you can get. But it turns out. But this is the flashing flash unit, so we, we took it out. It and just we sits found. In, and we found this little broken piece here. Uh, that tab fits in. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. It's in there, and it contacts between back and forth between the two lugs there. See them? Mm -hmm. yeah, and so. every time you power up, I don't know if I can show it, that pulls in and clicks. You can actually hear there what you should yeah, be getting. What you should be getting. So we picked one up there below Meat Farm, put it into it, and it was working perfect. Um, what other, other things? The steering was, wheel was hitting the windscreen. Yeah. When you'd lift it up, it wasn't stopping and it was hitting. B bouncing off it. We were afraid if someone get in. You, if you didn't realise it, you'd put it out through the window. Yeah. Well, a round thing shouldn't normally break a window, but you do not want to take a chance of that windscreen. Yeah, but it was hitting it quite hard, and if you did just push it yeah. up out of the way, it wouldn't. So we put a stopper on that, and that seems to fix that up. And, yeah. and all, all I put. Nine bulbs in the two dash. Yeah, there's so a pillar dash yes, and the side yeah, dash. So, so the control panels, the lights in the control panels, they were all they were really, lights. really faded. There were back lights on them, mm -hmm. and you took out the in the circuit board on them, and there was minigun. Nine bulbs all together. Nine bulbs on it. So you can, I'll show you it there now. It's at least you can see there what you're doing. What else, Mick? I see you with the floor up here. There must be something. Uh, tank. The fuel gauge is not working. The fuel gauge. Yeah, so initially when we turned on the ignition here, we only had a very faint light up at the top. And none of this bottom section was lighting up at all. <coughs> as you can see now it is. And over here as well, this was completely faded. You wouldn't really actually see it. And they took out this unit here and put the bulbs in at the back of it. So it, uh, mm -hmm. the only thing is that we had fuel sensor, we think, gone on it. So that's what makes that there at the minute. He's flat out, so you Leave the ignition on, will you? Ignition Please. on, ignition is on there, yeah. Grant. What are you testing for there? See if I power down to the tank unit for the fuel gauge. Well, Mick, what story here? We have the... Tank unit with the... Yeah, 7820. Mick is great on the numbers here. He thinks no. they're all the same, 7820, Yeah, the green, green and yellow. Green and yellow. <laughs> he gets mixed up here a lot of the time here. So we're going to do just a continuity check on it. Uh, slightly different from the last one we had out, because the last one we did was on a 3650, which had, no, the last one we had was a 6910, yeah. which had the unit, the pump in the bottom, but yeah. this one doesn't. This is just a straightforward. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Know, all right, well, what do you want me to do here? Just Hold on. Just check continuity on the yeah. wires. Okay. And we are at zero. Yeah. And then go to the other, other one. one. And we have continuity to there. So the wires are okay. Yeah, now what we can do is go between here. Put that, put that on there. <coughs> and if I move that down, that should vary in resistance, but it's not, as you can see. So in here is, there's a, a resistance moin in there and it's knackered. In there on that. <coughs> so that looks to be shot. Yeah. So in here we have our John Deere 3040. It's in for a little bit of repair. This tractor is uh, one that I would have bought off Alan King Angry Sales, which is down in Tipperary there. He had a 3040 and a 4040, and I bought this one because I actually, it really looks really straight, the tractor. So if anyone knows where the tractor came from, give us a shout. But um, it looks good, Mick, doesn't it? Mm, it's uh, fairly dry. original there, probably still high hours in it, but. The nice. driest I've ever seen a hydraulic. Yeah, very clean around the hydraulic, uh, very clean engine it now. When I do start her up here, she'd probably give a little bit of a roar as the 3040s generally do. Uh, well, maybe start a bit too high there, but as you can rev it up there, we think maybe that we have exhaust box gone internally. You can just put your hand in here when it's cold and you can feel it there. It, it feels very light on the exhaust box. We're going to take the, we'll take the bonnet off there and we'll try that. Uh, nothing else majorly obvious on it. We had a bent PTO so stub can. itself. Uh, so we took the stub just out of the 3650s there and put it into it. And when we ran it then it's running nice and straight. Uh, a seal here gone on the bottom shaft. Fairly, fairly standard on these. A little bit of play in it there, and it's leaking a drop of oil there, even with no weight on it. Now, 
We're going to put this in the dial feeder because Jack wanted it for the dial feeder. Nice handy tractor, two wheel drive, straight forward. And we're going to leave it up in the cattle yard. So we have a new seat to go into it because the seat is completely banjacks in it. Too wobbly. Uh, what else is going to make? We have a few lights to fix up in it. The, the cabin, the, the, the cladding in the cab is fairly tacky in it all right now. We're not just going to do anything we get. We're going to clean that back up as much as we can. We'll, we'll tape it back up and then we have new padding for it, but we'll bring that in at another stage. So I'm not just going to do it because we just don't have time to do that. There's a mixing valve gone on the HEHA. HEHA control. HEHA control, which we will fix as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's about 100 euro in for that valve. And we'll put that into it because at least you'd have a little, little bit of HEHA there, especially on the cold morning, it's just to clean the windows and that. After that then, it's a matter of cosmetics then. It'll be lights, mirrors, a little bit of a tidy up there. I might get Carl yeah. to do a little bit, but we're not going to touch <coughs> it because it is fairly original now. A little bit of rust coming there on those, but mud guards in general for a tractor of his age, Still very good. The 3040s were a Greyhound tractor. We would have had one here years ago on the far farm. And great sound out of them there. Great pulling tractor as well. What you get when Wu-Tang raised you? Y'all can't stop me. Go hard like I got an eight away in my heartbeat. And I'm eating at the beat like it gave a little speed to a great white shark on shark. We raw. Time to go off. Gone. Deuces goodbye. I got a world to see. And my girl, she want to see Rome. Caesar make you a believer now. Nah, I never ever did it for a throne. That validation comes from giving it back to the people now. Nah, Sing this song and it goes like Raise those hands, this is our party We came here to live life Like nobody was watching I got my city right behind me If I thought they got me Learn from that failure, gain humility And then we keep marching Can I we said, go back? This is the moment Tonight is the night We'll fight till it's over So we put our hands up Like the ceiling can hold us Like the ceiling can So the lads have spent the morning here taking out the exhaust box out of the 3040. Now there was a lovely roar out of it, but the reason was because it's absolutely banjax, isn't it? Yeah, it's just leaking out of everywhere. So like if you can see inside here, the whole way around, it's, it's nearly starting to go. Yeah, it's all cracked around there. Now we were thinking of putting a straight pipe on it, I know. It but would sound great, wouldn't it? Would, it? it would, but you'd be sick of it after a couple of weeks. So. Yeah, it'd be a bit nice in it after a while. So we have one of them added up. Now this is the seal here. As you can see, um, that was leaking on your lower. Yeah, so the whole draft bar shaft on the draft link is uh, going through this here, and because it's slightly war, she has just nipped the edge of the seal. So we have to get new seals for. I remember doing under the 350 before. You can flip it the other way around, so you get a fresh. You can get a fresh, fresh spot on it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what has so see, Carl has done a bit of spray paint, and now he's on the camera here. But look, it's fairly original, as we said. Wheels were painted on it at one stage, done up, brims, good job done on them, and we just said we do the, the side grills there, and we polish up the bonnet, yeah. put the new exhaust, but, uh, exhaust box on it. Now, you have seat out here too. Yeah, uh, a bit of a mess in there now at the minute, but... Uh, don't know how it's in there, now. a little bit of a, like, a little bit bedding or something in there. It'd be, it'd be a perfect home there for a wee mouse or something, wouldn't it? It would be, I'd say there was probably a wee mouse in there too with the look of it, but yeah, we've, we've been used to see how they're up. Now, we took the old one out, where is this? There we'll or somewhere, it's is it? Yeah. Um, now she has a slant to the right hand side which, you know, the SG2 cab, you're always looking to one side of the pillar or the other and this thing is obviously front of the It is the, the original seat, I'd say, but the look of it, they're covering on that because that was, but it's, it's in uh, I need even that out, cut the back here, so. Yeah. Look, it's just. Look, we're just going to want you to see into it because it's, uh, it's definitely worth putting one into. And that should really clean it up then. We Good. should be ready for the date feeder. Yeah, I think so. Good stuff. That should be. We have a bag here, Callum. Oh, look at this. How bad is the damage? Um, nice little bit now. So remember we had we took the gearbox on that. This is one off the Lemkin so our side gearbox on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it probably ran out of oil. And as a result then we done front burden, back burden. The burden had fused onto the shaft. Yeah. So, that's the new shaft. So, we had to get a new shaft, oh. which wasn't 
the cheapest thing. Yeah. And two of the bevel gears inside, one of them was salvageable, the other one was complete with a chip out of it. Yeah. So it had one of them in it. Um, this gear here, I remember on ours, had a little bit of war, so they had a second hand gear which they would have put on it. Oh, it's not too bad. And new seals and. New seals is on it, and yeah, it's ready to pop back on, so hopefully now. Very good, very good. Should be able to get that back on the road anyway. Yeah, yeah but nothing simple as you know. No, no, there never is. But there never is. But the luck on that, I don't follow it. That's it, that's it. So now it's time for. Tips and tricks. Tips and so tricks. this week's tips and tricks comes from Caelum. How have you got in store for us today, Caelum? I see a so, drill here and some other unusual little bits here. So what I have here is a little kit that you can buy in Little Aldi or any hardware store. You don't know, don't tell me Middle Isle again, <laughs> is that? <laughs> it's not, a, yeah, Middle Isle of course, but far from expensive, it's less than a tenner or whatever. Yeah. But I, well, I have no interest in anything else in the kit other than a tiny, tiny little wire brush. You probably can buy them elsewhere online or whatever. but. They're absolutely fantastic for cleaning electrical connections. Because I know myself, when you get a bulb and you put it in, you and twist it and turn it, twist it and turn it, or whatever, and you can go in there with a piece of sandpaper, put around the flathead of a screwdriver thing, and go in yeah. and sand it up. But if I can go in on one of these, and if I ever do get the chance, these are absolutely fantastic. Because you clean them in a second, and they're just perfect. So if I put this in, speed it up. And see how, how well polished off that is now. So your, your terminal or your, your contact then is much cleaner than on that. Yeah, and it only takes five seconds to do. And just with the little tiny size, and you can get them in the most places. And can you put them on to a die grinder? Yeah, you can put them on to a die grinder or anything like that. They're actually made for a Dremel. Dremel, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting them on the drill is a bit overkill, but they're absolutely perfect for that. And just to get you so many little just yeah, little problems problem. and issues and whatnot. And even on connectors, you can use the this slightly final one to go down into a, a pin and a connector in the lakes and you can go around them and clean, clean them up, and polish them all off. So in my eyes a fantastic great job. So, so the answer to last week's uh, mystery tool was yes, it was a very nice calipers, which we probably knew you all, uh, all would know, but what we wanted to know was how many different ways can you measure with it. Now <laughs> we would have said three ourselves. Yeah. We actually got a few answers in yeah to say it was four because yeah, there is a, um, Mick is going to demonstrate so the it here. the first three answers to come in there on the comments wall from Seamus Oak, Mac and Fall, Michael Watson, Stu Bud, who said it was three ways, and Tommy, who said it was four ways. Uh, one of the comments came in there from Greg Rooney, who said it could be a chipping tool there for, uh, for Mark or that one as well. But I do you better not chip with that. I doubt if Mick is going to give him that one. So Mick is going to explain here the four different ways because actually we've learned a little bit from last week. Mm -hmm. We always taught three ways, but actually there is a fourth way. So here he is going to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. right. for, first off on that, you've your zero there. Just make sure you clean those faces. Zero there. Hit that middle zero. If you want imperial, we don't too much nowadays. I always stay metric if I can. Unless very odd time here we get it with the bearings. Yeah. On the greater and that. Some of them are imperial. OD outside the diameter. Nice and simple. ID, this is a 18 socket, so we should be 18 across the flats there. Yep, and then we have depth. Pulls it there and down. And we have that. Now, the one that caught me, I live and learn, I didn't even realize I had it on the back of it here. If you look at this, you can put that there like that. Very hard to measure that one that way because of the radius. So if we put that there, and we have our depth. Yeah. That's the fourth one that I learned. As regards quality of uh, vernier calipers, you, you have You won't beat mid tower. And a tip for anyone, if your di digital meter's playing up, spray it out with contact cleaner. And it's magic to turn. You hardly have it 50 years, have you? How long have you got this one? 30, you have you? I have, yeah. 30 years very keep, it away, keep it away from you guys and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but we found some of them. You can get cheaper model ones in the grand and they're, they're, they're all right if they're looked after. Yeah, they're looked after, but if you want something with a bit of quality, you gotta pay for it, and that's mm. really it. And especially with the calipers or any of these engineering tools, yeah, you will pay that little but bit. But they more. are seriously accurate. Yeah, well we found with a lot of the other ones was the battery covers used to come off them and the yeah, top and off. Funny yeah. enough, it's the same cover on that. Yeah, well that one seems to well, probably a bit, a bit better, harder type of plastic. Yeah, harder, yeah. Less yeah. brittle. Yeah. So, but 
That's it. All right, well done, lads, anyway. And should keep the comments coming in there. So, I'd like to thank Mick there for a little job he done for me here last week. He was on it with the glue gun, the hot glue gun. I have my old toolbox. Now, this toolbox is from Halford, and I think I have it uh, maybe seven or eight years at this stage. Now, the quality of stuff wouldn't be fantastic in it, but the only thing is, I have everything in my head, and it has gone to the spud field a few times, and it has returned. So, a little bit of sentimental value there. Still walks away, throwing the back of the Jeep there, has all the bits, and yeah, done a great job on it there because it was falling so I'm it. Like another year or two ahead with Mick. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so this week's mystery too, and I think Mick actually has them in his pocket there, so if we can reveal that. They're your keys, Mick. They are, but they're not car keys. <laughs> oh, they're not car keys. So yeah. So let's get the brain boxes working again, lads. First three top answers will be on the board next week, and the best of luck with this one. So that's it for this week's Workshop Wednesday. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos there, comment what you want, and we will get back to you. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday.